Hello and welcome back to the Rose Gallery. Today, we're taking a look at Metallic Child. Metallic Child is a top-down character action game with some shades of Mega Man in it. And let's get right into it. So we begin by popping out of our box in the main area, the core lab. This is the place where we can spend our metagame currency, get upgrades, and do a few other things. But there's two main things to show off here. One is the upgrade room. You use chips to buy upgrades. I have quite a bit from completing the game. So let me just buy a little bit. We can optimize our HP recovery. Get higher level weapons and drops. Nice. And get a little more HP. The second thing we want to check out here is the customization room. Here we can buy costumes. Costumes will do certain things, usually with metallic child weapons or giving us certain stat boosts. Unfortunately, we missed uh, Halloween, but we're just going to consider this the Halloween episode and buy the pumpkin. And now that we are equipped, we can pick a robot to fight. As I said, Shades of Mega Man, we have a few choices here. I'm going to go ahead and pick Isla. We also get to choose our starting weapon. Two of them, actually. I'm going to go with the gauntlet and the sword and shield. And we get to choose our metallic child skills. These are skills you get from beating bosses. And we will talk a little bit about what those do later. And here we are. So we are controlling the titular metallic child, and unfortunately named Rona. And our job is to kill robots. As an action game, we have a few uh, basic things at our disposal. We have basic attacks, which cost nothing. We have throws which will deal extra damage to enemies when you slam them into walls. We have a jump, which also is free to do. And a special skill, which costs battery. Battery can be regained by attacking enemies with your regular attack. You also have a defensive mechanic. If using a sword and shield, it's a guard. And if you're using a anything else, it becomes a roll. So usually you want to chain attacks, throws, and specials. Attack into special is usually the way you rack up big combos. Not that combos actually matter. The only thing that influences your rank is whether you got hit or not. So for instance, I should be able to clear this room with an S if I kill this guy. The higher your rank, the more discs you will get after a successful combat. Discs being the currency you use to buy things during the run. Now let's talk about cores. So this enemy, uh, he left behind a core. I can either kill him and get discs, or I can grab a core. So cores are temporary upgrades that tick down over time in combat. They come in two versions. They come in a bugged version, which is a negative core and will give you negative stats or some kind of other stat back and positive cores. Positive cores being stat bonuses and other cool stuff. There are also super cores, which you get once you collect enough core juice, and those are permanent upgrades that will persist throughout the run. You can see cores at the bottom left part of the screen. I have room for three in my inventory. If I take more than three, they start getting overwritten.
Now my takedown gauge is almost full here. If you look in the top left of the screen, there's a yellow bar that measures your takedown. And the more attacks you do, the more your takedown gauge goes up. And once you get a full takedown gauge, you can do a takedown, which does a massive amount of damage to an enemy. And if it kills them, it gives you some core juice, which you can use towards upgrades. I am not doing too high. It's been a little while since I played. You'll have to forgive me. So let's grab the core from this guy. See if you got anything good. Alright, so we charge our battery by two and we defeat an enemy. That's not bad. This is a core charger. Sometimes they drop after battles and they give you two free cores or one free core and a drone. Let's pick a drone just to show it off. Drones are uh, friendly versions of enemies that float behind you and do certain attacks. And then we will also grab a core. So this energy ball will float around us and deal damage to whatever it touches. It's actually one of the more useful upgrades, especially if you can get multiple. Cores can be leveled up, usually by using a uh, core charger machine. And I'll show that off the next time I find one. One other type of attack I didn't mention are charge attacks. See, this guy has a shield on, so I need to do a charge attack to actually break his shield. Notably, you can also throw them. That will also break the shield. And throw is probably better in the long term. It'll do more damage and it's a little easier to do, but it does leave you exposed a little bit. I can spend discs here to activate storage search, which will show me where a storage box is on the map, but we're not going to do that because I can find it on my own. Enemies can be thrown into other enemies to deal more damage. But again, throws do leave you a little open when you're doing them. All right, looks like this is a dead end, so we can teleport to anywhere else on the map that we've been. And for this first level, I kind of want 100% the exploration, just to show off what that does. So this might take a little bit. Let's swap over to sword for a second. The, the best thing in the game. The sword and shield. These types of weapons. Ooh, a supply box. So sometimes we get these. This one has a core in it. And some core juice. Which improves our core level at the bottom left. Once it gets to one, then we get a permanent upgrade. Permanent for this run, at least. Anyway, the reason the sword and shield is broken is because of guarding. Rolling is effective enough, but it could be better. It leaves you open a bit. Um, there aren't that many iframes. Guarding, on the other hand, will block almost every attack in the game, comes out super fast, and you get to stay in place while you do it. So now we have our first super core. We got enough juice and we can level up our core. We have a few selections here. I'm gonna go with Cat's Crawl, which will let us move slowly when guarding. So now we can creep around. Let's switch back to the gauntlet for now though. Here's a weapon shop. We can spend discs to get a random different weapon, which, you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. A better sword, nice. 
So weapons come at different levels, S being the highest, C being the lowest. So now we have a new sword and shield that deals a bit more damage and has a different special attack. This powers up our down attack, which is our jumping attack. Where haven't I been? Oh yeah, this corner here. You may have noticed the uh, giant flashing disconnect screen or the connect screen that came before it. One special thing about cores is once you get three of them all together, then you go into a special powered up mode that makes your attacks faster and deals slightly more damage. So if possible, you should always have three cores equipped. It's really luck of the draw. There's not a lot you can do about it. It depends on if cores drop or not, but even if you have to take bug cores, it's better to have three cores equipped than not. I kind of hate these giant crab guys. We have way too much HP. And apparently they spawn way too often too. I'm trying to throw this guy into it, but it's not quite working out for me. All right, here we found the enemy nest. This is where we go if we want to fight the boss. But we still have some rooms to explore, and like most roguelites, you are rewarded for exploration. So let's keep looking around for now, even though I'm probably gonna die soon. Here we've got a shop. You can purchase a few different things, such as an emergency repair chip, which will revive us on zero HP. Uh, considering how I'm playing, I kind of want that, but I can't afford it. There's nothing I really can afford, so let's move on. HP canister, that'll be helpful. Phenomenally good at interrupting me out of special attacks. Alright, so we got the HP Marauder. 
We recover HP when we defeat an enemy. We can level this up again to recover even more HP, which I desperately need right now. So let's go kill some enemies. All right, here's our next super core upgrade. The sword and shield boost is what I usually take because I use sword and shield a lot. So let's grab that. We have also explored everything now. So if we head to the boss room, we get to uh, open this chest. Which has some shields in it for us and a bunch of core juice, so we get another level up. We'll level up our physical special skills, grab some bug data, and now we're going to head into our first mini boss, which I will sort of cheese by using my metallic child weapon. This is the weapon you get from beating bosses. If this guy would stand still, that is. I would cheese it. And it costs energy to use that. You can see in the uh, top left, the defense shooter. It has a 33 or 73% charge right now. But we just got some more energy for it in this chest, so should be able to use again later. Ooh, and a new pair of gauntlets, too. Let's swap those out. Looks like a pretty good special attack on these guys. So let's move on to the next level. That'll be the only time I 100% a level, as this game is somewhat repetitive. There's not a whole lot of different scenarios and situations to show off, so... We're going to make a beeline for the boss. But first... This lady is one of the NPCs that occasionally show up. They all give certain side quests. Hers is you have to kill enough robots and find enough of her weapon boxes that then she will then reward you with a new weapon, usually a pretty good one. Although I'm pretty set on weapons right now, so I might just ignore this quest. I should not have picked the ice level. I hate the ice level. He's got very annoying traps and very annoying enemies. So now that we're uh, down here in the second level, you might be wondering, what is Arona? Why are we on this spaceship fighting robots in the first place? What really is a metallic child? So let me give you a quick lore dump here. In metallic child, 
The Metallic Child Project is a project going on on a space station. It is a research project where scientists are making a bunch of androids. At some point, the lady in charge of the project decided to start a rebellion and the Metallic Childs took over. So your job as Rona, the last Metallic Child, or the original one, is to defeat all the other Metallic Childs, gather their cores, and use them to prevent the space station from crashing into the Earth, which is currently set to do. There's a little more to it than that, but that's the basic story. Which is also one of the other reasons I say that this game has some shades of Mega Man. You find the Robot Masters, you beat them, you get their weapons, you go to the next one. Let's grab this combo skill attack boost. Not that I'm doing a lot of combos with my sword and shield, but hey. Like we got a shop. Core energy, a shield, a drone, nothing I really want. Nice curve on that projectile. grab. We'll fill up our cores and to enter the special core state. Here's a health machine. I could use that. So one thing about Metallic Child, and I know it's going to be crazy for me to say this considering the way I've been playing, but it's not a very hard game. This is a special power suit. If we had enough discs, we could use it. And it will give us a little upgrade in combat for a bit. But as we're poor, we're not going to use that. Maybe if we get some money. Anyway, as I was saying, Metallic Child is a pretty easy game. I've beaten it, played it for several hours. I've only died like three times in it. It's very generous with health. And also, you don't really need upgrades to beat it. Let's grab Wide Range Attack. But I do abuse the Sword and Shield, as I mentioned. But still, it's a pretty easy game, uh, pretty quick to go through. Unlike most roguelites, it is not, despite claiming to be, extremely difficult. And having beaten it, I can't say there's a whole lot of replay value to it. I could keep getting more accessories at health upgrades and other upgrades and so on and so forth, but I don't really feel the need to. It was a fun little diversion while it lasted, but as a whole, I don't find the game very deep or engaging. Those spikes, dude. There we go. Alright, 
right, looks like those are the last two boxes we need. Just need to kill this guy. Another sword and shield boost. Excellent. Let's see what she gives us. An energy electro fist. We'll switch to gauntlets a bit to show these off. As much as I need my sword and shield. Let's electrocute some people. Drone. Nice new mini core. We got recovered during takedowns. That's pretty good. Anything that gives me more HP is what I'm looking for right now. All right, a new super core. Reduces MC energy consumption by 15 is pretty good. That's our metallic child weapon. All right, no exploration bonus for me, but we don't need it. This time we're gonna use the worms. Worms are putting in work there. All right. That floor is wrapped up. Just one more to go. Now we're doing a little better. Getting a few more consistent S ranks. Not a lot, mind you, but I'm warming up. Oh god, it's a crab. Never mind. Everything is going wrong. Let's 
Getting a lot of discs, but not a lot to spend them on. Nah, I'm gonna keep these energy balls. Never mind. I picked up a bug for instead. One more core. You can only go up to level 10 with super cores. After that, you don't get any more permanent upgrades. But I probably won't have to worry about that, that, that this run. That's not good. I hate these crabs so much. Weapon upgrader. I don't think I can upgrade my sword any more than it is. Let's give it a try though. Upgrade Alright, it just increased my throw attack power, which is not terrible. Oh no! I got the Minecraft core. This core is pretty good. I won't lie. You can also get rid of bug cores with the mini core charger, which the game recommends, but it's not always worth it. Like this Minecraft core, it doesn't matter, I'll keep it around, it's funny. There are a few cores like that, that aren't really, they're supposedly detriments, but aren't really, they're more cosmetic than anything. This is it. 
now we're gonna fight a proper metallic child. So I don't know if there are certain metallic child weapons that other metallic childs have a weakness to. Like in Mega Man, where you have Cut Man is weak to Grass Man or whatever. I have never really tried it. Because there's really only two weapons I use. There's Defensive Shooter and then the, the Hydra Worm. Also, the game occasionally lies to you about when you can take things down. Oh yeah, she does her healing. I forgot. Alright, I need to throw something at her. Or I could do this, I guess. I can't say these boss fights are particularly exciting. They're kind of just HP sponges. Although if I die, I suppose it'd be exciting. So when bosses get to half health, they go into second gear, where they have a few different attacks, hit a little harder, are a little more annoying to deal with. There's a plain conservative. I'm getting a little worried. And that's a boss. I expected much worse than an A rank, to be honest. And then we head back to the lab and do it all over again. So I'm not gonna fight against every boss and run through every level. They're all pretty samey. If you want to experience the story of Metallic Child, you can do so yourself. It's all right, I suppose. But that's it. That is the Metallic Child. 
Thanks for watching.